Hi folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Adobe Premiere Elements so that you can edit projects in 1440p, otherwise known as QHD or Quad High Definition, and also 2160p, otherwise known as UHD or Ultra High Definition. This video tutorial is primarily aimed at those creating videos for YouTube, but it should also be equally applicable for many other purposes. Note that I will be demonstrating this using the Windows version of Premiere Elements 14, but the same methodology should also apply to the current version which is 15 and hopefully to other versions as well. If you have any issues then let me know in the comments section below. In Premiere Pro it is easy to create what is called a custom sequence preset that allows you to edit 1440p or 2160p material. This is easily achieved by adding a new sequence to an existing project and changing its settings such that the editing mode is set to custom. The frame size is set to 2560 by 1440 or 3840 by 2160 and the other settings defined accordingly. This can then be simply saved and it will appear in the new sequence dialog for any future sequences that you wish to create. Now a major difference between Premiere Pro and Premiere Elements is that in Premiere Elements you can only create one sequence and this is instead referred to as the project instead of a sequence. Therefore in Premiere Elements presets are referred to as project settings despite the fact that they are still stored in a sequence presets folder. First impressions are that Premiere Elements does not support the creation of custom project settings. When you start Premiere Elements and go to create a new project via the File, New, Project menu, and then click on the Change Settings button, you will be taken to a list of available presets. When you review this Change Settings dialog box, you will be struck by the complete absence of any option to create and save custom presets, as you can in the new sequence dialog in Premiere Pro. And although I don't own Premiere Elements 15, I believe this is also the case with that version. Now, Premiere Elements does incorporate a very useful feature called Dynamic Sequence Preset, where it will automatically select the project setting preset that most closely matches your source material. However, as there are no 1440p presets available, using this only results in a 1080p preset being selected, which clearly isn't of much use to us. I'll demonstrate this right now. Let's create a new project using the snazzily titled AV CHD Lite 720p24. Now let's verify the project settings by going to Edit, Project Settings and then General. Here we can see under Editing Mode the selected preset, under Time Base the frames per second or FPS for the project, and then under Video Frame Size we have the resolution for the project. Now let's cancel out of that and add a 1440p 60 frames per second clip that I have from one of my Let's Play videos. To add the clip, we'll first click on Add Media, then Files and Folders, and then Browse to the clip that I want to add. To force Premiere Elements to try and change the project settings, I'm going to drag this clip to the timeline. Now with the clip on the timeline, let's check the project settings again and see if the dynamic sequence preset has worked. So Edit, Project Settings, and General again. Now we can see that Premiere Elements has changed the project settings to the preset that it decided was the closest match to the clip on the timeline. In this example, the preset has changed from AVCHD 720p24 to AVCHD 1080p60. However, this is clearly not the 1440p60 that we were hoping for. While this demonstration focused on 1440p, things are a little bit better for 2160p as a number of presets for that resolution do exist. However, the frames per second options are very limited and for instance don't include the popular YouTube options of 30 and 60 frames per second. The solution to this problem is to manually create and add 1440p and 2160p custom presets. Now adding a custom preset to Premiere Elements is the easy part and I'll come on to that in a short while. The difficult part though is actually creating a working custom preset in the first place. I say working because there are a lot of factors in a custom preset that when setting correctly 
could lead to undesirable results such as timeline rendering not working. Now one of the main purposes of this tutorial video is to help you create a custom preset that works for you. Unfortunately, there is no single solution for everyone as there are just too many variables involved including the video and audio formats that you record in. As such, I will work through how to set up a custom preset line by line. Now this may seem tedious, but it is necessary. And once you have a single or set of working custom presets, you may never have to change them again. For me, the effort was well worth it. The simplest way to get started is by copying and editing one of the existing presets. These are stored in this location for Windows if you installed Premiere Elements in its default location. Replace the drive letter with whatever drive you installed the program on. For ease of reference, I'll place a copy of this path in the video description. Unfortunately, I have been unable to verify the location of these files on a Mac. If someone can confirm what it is, I will update the video description accordingly. For the purposes of this video, I am going to use an existing NTSC preset as the basis for creating an example 1440p60 custom preset. That is a preset with a video resolution of 1440p and a frame rate of 60 frames per second. Bear in mind that with HD non-broadcast video formats such as 1440p and 2160p, the only differences between NTSC and PAL presets in Premiere Elements is the frame rate. As such, it really is irrelevant if you select an NTSC or a PAL preset as your starting point. But, and this is a big but, I will in fact be recommending a specific existing preset for you to use as the starting point and I'll explain why later in this video. The first step in creating a custom preset is to navigate to the location of the existing presets and copy one of them to a new custom folder. So let's select the Sequence Presets folder and then create a new folder by pressing either the New Folder icon or using the keyboard shortcut of Control plus Shift plus N. If necessary, click on the Continue button if the Destination Folder Access Denied dialog box appears. Now rename the new folder to Custom. Next, let's copy the NTSC DSLR1080p30.sq preset to the new custom folder by using the copy and paste commands. Here I'm using the keyboard shortcuts of Control and C to copy the file and Control and V to paste the file. As before, if necessary, click on the Continue button if the Destination Folder Access Denied dialog box appears. Now before we actually edit this file, let's rename it to something more appropriate for the custom preset that we're creating. Right click on the file and select Rename from the pop-up menu. In this case, I'm going to simply call it QHD 1440p60, while ensuring that the file extension of SQ preset is left untouched. Now let's open the file to edit it. I'll be using a program called Notepad++, which I really like because it color codes the text as the presets are XML files. Notepad++ also can save edited files to administrator protected program files such as this one. If you wish to use a plain text editor like the standard Notepad program, then you will have to copy the preset file to be edited to a normal location such as your desktop or your documents folder. If you do this, then don't forget to copy your edited custom preset file back to the sequence presets slash custom folder before trying to use it. So let's go through this file line by line and modify it to suit our needs. The first four lines of this file are standard across most of the presets Premiere Elements uses and should just be left alone. The only variation I have seen in these lines is in the version number, which I believe reflects when the preset was created by Adobe and is simply the version of the preset format at that time. As Adobe added features to Premiere Pro and Premiere Elements, they occasionally had to add support for additional parameters in these preset files, and I believe this is what this version number reflects. However, in Premiere Elements, all of the standard presets have exactly the same parameters, all of which were supported starting in version 1, and as such, it is unnecessary to change this value. The next line defines the resolution of the monitor panel, which is currently set to 1920 by 1080. I have experimented with this setting and found no discernible visual improvement in setting this at a higher resolution. Now this is down to the relatively small size of the monitor panel relative to the rest of the screen. 
In fact, setting this to a higher resolution increases the load on your system with likely no visual benefit. And so I recommend leaving this set to the current 1920 by 1080. This is in fact in line with the monitor panel resolution used in similar high resolution sequence presets in Premiere Pro. However, if you are using a lower end system and you find that your previews are stuttering or lagging, then either render the timeline or lower this setting to 1280 by 720. Just remember that you must create a new project using the custom preset for any changes in the custom preset to be included in your project. It is important to understand that it is not possible to change the monitor panel video resolution once a project has been created. Now the next seven lines of the preset file deal with how many audio and video tracks are included in the project timeline, including the type of audio tracks when you create a project. Don't forget though that you can always add or remove tracks once you have created a project so this is not set in stone. Personally, I only work with stereo audio tracks and two main audio and four video tracks meets my everyday needs. So I'm going to change these lines to those values. So we'll go up to the stereo tracks option here and we'll change that value to two and I'll go down to the number of video tracks and I will change that to four. The next two lines deal with the quality of the video in the monitor panel and the quality of the timeline rendering. Bear in mind that these two settings do not affect the quality of your encoded videos, only the quality of the video displayed in the monitor panel. Now the maximum render quality parameter is, I believe, a leftover from Premiere Pro and appears to have no impact in Premiere Elements. As can be seen here in Premiere Pro, this setting is included in the new sequence dialog box. However, it is not included in the project change settings dialog box in Premiere Elements. I have also confirmed that this setting has no impact on the timeline render quality setting in the project preferences in Premiere Elements. Therefore, my recommendation is to just leave this setting at false and if you want to change the timeline rendering quality, then do so manually in the project preferences by going to Edit, Preferences, General. But bear in mind that this is a huge resource hog and you'll need a high-end system and lots of memory for this to work well. The maximum bit depth setting is only relevant if your source material has a color depth of 32 bits and you want the monitor panel to display at that color depth. But again, bear in mind that this also is a huge resource hog and again, you'll need a high-end system and lots of memory for this to work well. My recommendation is to leave this setting at false. The next line defines the aspect ratio of the individual pixels in your video. Now, I don't intend to discuss pixel aspect ratio in this video, but if you do want more information, then check out the links in the video description below. Personally, I record all of my footage using screen capture software, which creates video with a pixel aspect ratio of one to one. And as such, I leave this setting at its default of one comma one. Again, change this setting as necessary to what works best for you and your source material. For now, let's skip over the next four lines which deal with the monitor panel or preview video codecs and examine the subsequent two editing mode lines. Don't worry, I'll come back to the preview video codecs in a moment. Now the editing mode GUI ID or more simply put, the editing mode, is simply a form of program preset that determines a number of things. Firstly, the time bases that are available to your project. Also, the video format used for preview files and playback and the other formats that will be available to you. And the compression methods available to you. Now, in the sequence preset files, such as the one we're viewing now, the editing mode is set via the GUI ID which is a long string of alpha numeric characters. In this video, I'll only be talking about two of these editing modes. Firstly, the desktop editing mode, and secondly, the DSLR editing mode. Now I'm showing on screen here the two GUI IDs for those modes, one for each, um, and both of these I'll also place in the video description below so that you can easily copy and paste them to your custom preset files. At first pass, the most appropriate editing mode for 1440p and 2160p projects 
in Premiere Elements would appear to be the desktop editing mode. Now this is because it is in fact the same as the custom editing mode in Premiere Pro. And in Premiere Pro, this provides the user with the greatest flexibility. However, and this is a big however, in Premiere Elements, the desktop editing mode is not a true custom mode. I have found that regardless of the preview video codecs that one specifies in the four preceding lines of the preset file, when creating a project, Premiere Elements always overrides this selection with the Microsoft AVI codec. And I assume similar behavior is seen on Macs, but with the QuickTime codec being forced on the user. This wouldn't be so bad if this was the optimal video preview codec to use. However, in my experience, I have found that timeline rendering with the Microsoft AVI codec is incredibly slow. However, if I select a different editing mode, such as DSLR, and choose the iframe MPEG video preview codec, then timeline rendering is much faster. As such, I really cannot recommend using the desktop editing mode. In fact, the only other viable editing mode that is available in Premiere Elements is the DSLR editing mode that I mentioned a moment ago. Now this editing mode is the only other mode that I have found that will allow you to set the resolution, the time base, and the preview codecs in a custom preset to those that work for 1440p and 2160p videos. Well, at least that's my experience with the videos that I edit. This is why I base this custom preset file on one of the supplied pre-configured DSLR preset files, as this means that I can leave the GUI ID alone as it is already set to DSLR. Now, let's go back to the preceding four lines where we select the video preview codec. In most cases, Premiere Elements presets utilize the iframe MPEG codec, and I'm guessing that this is because it is the most widely compatible and optimized preview codec available in the program. As I mentioned a moment ago, I have found this codec to be quite efficient at timeline rendering, and as such, this is my video preview codec of choice. Therefore, with the editing mode set to DSLR, I can set these four lines to the iframe MPEG settings shown here. Again, because I'm starting from a DSLR preset, I can leave these settings as they are, as they are already set to the iframe MPEG codec. However, feel free to experiment yourself to see what works best for you. Now, the next lines that we'll edit are those that display a simple description when a preset is selected in the Change Settings dialog box, as you can see here. For the description, I will only edit the English US line. However, if you have installed Premiere Elements in a different language, then edit the appropriate line as necessary. Here I'm going to change the description to, for editing footage recorded in 2560 by 1440, square pixels, non-anamorphic, and then some codes, and then I'm gonna have 16 by nine progressive QHD video at 60 frames per second, and again, some codes again, and then just finally 48 kilohertz audio. Note that the ampersand hash 13 semicolon, ampersand hash 10 semicolon, are simply codes to insert a new line and a hyphen when the description is displayed. As I will not use this custom preset in other languages, I'm going to delete all of those other descriptions. The next lines cover the name of the custom preset in a range of different languages. However, Premiere Elements doesn't actually use the names defined here. They are in fact a leftover from Premiere Pro, upon which Premiere Elements is based. In Premiere Pro, the names defined here dictate the name of the sequence preset that is shown in the new sequence dialog, and this can be different to the preset's file name. However, in Premiere Elements, the preset name shown in the Change Settings dialog is taken from the preset's file name and not from the names defined here in the preset file. As such, all of these names can be safely deleted as I am showing now. The next line is the video field type, which should be set to zero to select no fields, which in effect sets this to progressive scan. If you want to set this to interlace video, then set this value to one or two, depending on if you want upper or lower fields first. As we are creating a progressive scan custom preset, we'll leave this value at zero. The next line controls whether audio time format is measured using audio samples or milliseconds. The default in Premiere Elements is to have time displayed in audio samples. However, you can display time in milliseconds, which according to Adobe, allows for sample level precision when you are editing audio. 
Now the setting of audio time format is one of the few project settings that can actually be changed after you have created a project. You can simply change the audio time format via the project settings dialog by going to edit, project settings, general, and selecting the audio time format dropdown. Now in Premiere Pro's presets, you set this parameter to 200 to display audio samples and to 201 to display milliseconds. Unfortunately, this entire aspect of Premiere Elements is broken. Firstly, no matter what you set this value to in the Premiere Elements preset file, the audio time display always defaults to audio samples. Secondly, Premiere Elements provides no way to change the duration displayed on the timeline to actually use the audio display format instead of the video display format. In Premiere Pro, this is simply achieved by selecting the sequence options in the sequence panel and selecting the show audio time units option. However, this has been omitted in Premiere Elements, making the only place that the audio display format setting has any effect is in audio files located in the project assets. So add a statement in the Premiere Elements help file and also in the full program manual that setting the audio display format to milliseconds allows for, quote, sample level precision when you are editing audio is completely bogus, seeing as you can't set the timeline to actually use this setting. Now, rant over and back to the custom preset file. Bearing in mind everything I have just said, the only option here is just to leave this line set to the default of 200. Now, moving down to the next line, this controls the video time format, which specifies the way time is shown throughout your project. The time display options that are available are dependent upon the time base or frames per second that are set for the project, which I'll be coming onto shortly. The table I have on screen now shows you the options that will be available to you based on your selected frame rate and the corresponding video time display value that you should set in the custom preset file. In this example, I want the frames per second to be 60 and for the time format to be set to 60 FPS timecode. And so I will enter 106 in the video time display parameter. The next line, which is called audio channel type, is used to set what's called the master track type. Clips can contain one audio channel, otherwise known as mono, two audio channels, otherwise known as stereo, or five audio surround channels with a low frequency effects audio channel, otherwise known as 5.1 surround. In Premiere Elements, a project can accommodate any combination of clip types. However, all the audio is mixed to the master track format, be it mono, stereo, or 5.1 surround. The master track type can be easily seen in a project by selecting the audio view for the timeline. The master track levels are shown to the right of the timeline with one bar shown per track. So for a stereo master track, two bars are shown while for a 5.1 surround master track, six bars are shown. To set the master track type for your custom preset, enter one of the following values. Zero for a mono master track, one for a stereo master track, and two for a 5.1 surround master track. In my case, all of my clips are in stereo format and I also encode my videos into a stereo format. Therefore, I will leave this value set at one. The next line is the audio frame rate, which is in effect the audio sample rate for the project. Now this can be set to suit your needs using the following values that I'm showing on screen now. In my projects, all of the audio is recorded and edited at 48,000 Hertz. And as such, I will leave this value set at 529, 2000. The next line is where we will finally get to define the video resolution for the project and it's called the video frame size. This is set by defining the starting coordinates, which in 99.99% of cases will be 0, 0, 0, and this is then followed by the desired resolution, which in our case for this example is 2560 by 1440. Therefore, the full value for this line should be 0, 0, 0, 0,0,2560,1440. Finally, we're at the last line, which defines the video frame rate or frames per second of the project. In this table, I show the values of the video frame rate parameter for a range of different project frames per second. In this video, I have selected to create a custom preset for 60 FPS projects. And as such, I will set the value of this parameter to 42336000000. Wow, that's it. Now go ahead and save your custom preset with an appropriate name. You will then go ahead and edit this file again and save it with a different name to create additional custom presets with different parameters, such as differing frames per second or video resolutions. 
Now, when you go to create a new project by clicking on the File, New, Project menu item, and then select Change Settings in the New Project dialog box, you can expand your custom folder to see all of the custom presets that you have created. Note that if your custom preset is not listed, then you have either made an error in the preset file rendering it invalid, or you have not given it the correct file extension. Thank you for sticking with me, folks. That's it. I hope that this video has been useful for you, and if so, please click on the thumbs up below. I'd very much appreciate any feedback you may have, so let me know your thoughts or if you're still having issues in the comments section below. Also, if you haven't already done so, then please subscribe. The more feedback and subscribers I get, the more motivation I have to create more videos like this. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.